with the Civil War, the canned foods industry grew. The original cans were soldered by hand, often with lead. Sometimes you didn't get the seams quite right that you could have microorganisms could get in and breed and ferment. Most of the time that's pretty obvious to the consumer. The can will explode, you'll open it up and it'll be putrid, or you'll have some indication that the food is unfit for you know, to be eaten. Um, but as we found out later, obviously, there were things like botulism and things like that that couldn't be seen and the food, food seemed perfectly safe. In the 19th century and up to uh, 1906, in the U.S., the situation with food and drugs was essentially a free-for-all. There were no rules. There were no regulations. People could do whatever they wanted. A drug package would say, this cures cancer and scrofula and dandruff and corns and everything you can imagine. And it had 50 ingredients, all of which were nutty ingredients. It didn't make any difference. It was all promotion. When the Bureau of Chemistry began in the 1860s, the focus really wasn't on, on consumer products, so not in the sense of foods or drugs or so on. They were more concerned with, with uh, commodities of great interest to farmers. So they were looking at things like fertilizers. Harvey Washington Wiley came to, to the Department of Agriculture in 1883 from his post as professor of chemistry at Purdue University and as state chemist of the state of Indiana. He is the person who, probably more than anybody else, functions as a visionary for sort of a science-based program of food, drug, chemistry regulation, applying principles of 19th century chemistry, in particular German chemistry, to regulatory issues in the United States. He hired a lot of scientists with uh, European backgrounds, and he hired a lot of people from the land-grant college network in the United States. And that land-grant college network had been established in 1862 under the Morrill Land-Grant Act. Um, but slowly, each state began to build its own land-grant college, which was usually an agricultural or mechanical college, or in some cases both, as in Texas A&M. And the USDA began to recruit disproportionately from these schools. So it was a combination of European scientists and then sort of farm-grown, rurally socialized and developed boys coming off the farms who had gotten their science training at these land-grant colleges, and then here they were in Washington. 